We're now going to take a closer look at the utility tracks that we touched on earlier. There are several different ways you can use the utility tracks. You can record audio to them. You can record MIDI to them. You can generate real tracks right to the utility tracks, where you can then hear and edit the real tracks audio and view and edit the real charts MIDI. You can copy audio from one track to another. You can copy MIDI from one track to another. And you can generate harmonies from audio tracks, including real tracks, and send those separated harmonies to the utility tracks. I'll now show you in more detail some ways to use utility tracks, including generating real tracks to the utility tracks, generating harmonies on the utility tracks, and even recording your own audio to a utility track. To start with, let's have a look at using utility tracks to add real tracks. I've got a chord progression entered in here, and I've got this hush hop, minimal hip hop style loaded with some cool modern synth sounds. But I'd like to give it a bit of a rustic acoustic edge as well, so I'm going to add a real track on one of the utility tracks. I have my mixer set to only display tracks I'm actually using, so I'm going to use this button to actually view one of the 16 utility tracks. And then I'll right click on it to generate a real track. Now we've recently added some new old time real tracks which include banjo guitar or ganjo which is a banjo that's tuned like a guitar and has a very unique sound. So I'll filter by that and I'll select this one. So I think for this style this is going to sound good with a ton of reverb. And I really like that combo. And a new feature is that you can double click on the track label to easily name it. So I'll do that to label this one Ganjo. And we also have some new lap steel reel tracks. So I'll try adding one of those to another utility track as well. This Americana eighths high might be a good one to use. Now that's really cool. I'll probably do some mixing later with that so that it just kind of floats in and out. But actually some of these phrases might be kind of cool with harmonies. So I'm going to make use of the new feature that allows you to write harmonies to different utility tracks. The Audio Harmonies feature has been in previous versions of Banana Box, but up until now the harmonies would all be put along with a source on a single track. But now you can separate them to different tracks, giving you way more control. So I'll create two harmony tracks, one above, one below, and I'll put them on new utility tracks. And now I'd like some really low, grumbly, sustained bass parts to add to this. And I just happen to have an accordion here in my studio, so I'm going to record some left-hand bass parts here. And that's another great thing with the new utility tracks, you can use them to record multiple audio tracks of your own into Band in a Box. So I'll press the record button, and I'll be recording to this new utility track. The VU meter is now showing, so I'll play a little just to make sure my level is okay. It's clipping a little bit, so I'll bring the level down on the audio interface I'm using. That should be good. So here goes. Alright, so now that's completely done, I'll put quite a bit of reverb on this one too, and I'll check it out. So 
So now I just wanted to show you a bit of behind the scenes of where all this audio is located on your hard drive. You can see in the title bar that I've saved this song as Minimalist Hip Hop with Ganjo Steel and Accordion. I saved it to its own separate folder, which is here, Hush Hop Tracks. So the Band in a Box file itself is this SGU file, Minimalist Hip Hop with Ganjo Steel and Accordion .sgu. And then there are all of these WAV files. The WAV files are the actual utility tracks from Band in a Box. The audio files get saved automatically with the SGU with the same name, but with number one for utility track one, number two for utility track two, etc. This is all done automatically behind the scenes. When you close Band in a Box and then open it again and load this SGU file, any WAV files with the same name plus number one, number two, etc. get loaded with it as utility tracks. If you move these audio tracks or rename them, when you open the SGU, they won't be present. Since I now have all of these audio tracks that I've put onto the utility tracks, this is a good time to show you some improvements to the audio edit window itself. The scroll wheel on the mouse can be used to zoom in or out of the waveform. It's been able to do this in previous versions as well, but up until now, there was only one option for the type of zooming. That is, wherever your mouse is currently located, that's where the focal point of the zoom was. However, now there's an additional option where it can zoom into the current location of the cursor instead. So now, if I click over here, but I move my mouse over here, and then I start to zoom in and out, it's zooming to that location rather than the location of the mouse. Many other DAWs work this way, and so if that's what you're used to using, you'd probably prefer to set it this way. There's also an option, if you've selected this, that when zooming it will snap the current location of the cursor to the center. So again, the cursor's there, but if I move my mouse over here and start to zoom, it snaps that location to the center. Again, these are all mostly to do with what you're used to, so you can set it to whatever is most comfortable for you. There are now cut and copy commands in the edit menu. And of course, you can just use the standard hotkeys, command C to copy, and I'll switch to a new utility track, and command V to paste. This button up here is the track selector button, and you can click on it to get a list of all the tracks, and you can select the one you want. But you also don't even have to click on it. If you move your mouse over it, then you can use the scroll wheel to scroll through the tracks. And of course, as we saw earlier, you can also just click on the tracks themselves in the mixer to select those different tracks in the audio edit window. All of these things go for the other similar views, such as notation and piano roll. And there are useful new hotkeys available in the audio edit window. The home and end buttons now have intuitive functions in the audio edit window. Home will move the cursor to the beginning of a track, and end will move the cursor to the end of the track. If you've got a point selected in the middle, Shift Home will select a region between the start and that point, and Shift End will select a region between that point and the end. And of course, Command A will select the whole track. I'm now going to show you another very useful function of the utility tracks, the ability to regenerate part of a real track. I've got a new reel style, Impart Slow 8's Mallets Folk loaded, and I generated a guitar solo over this progression onto Utility Track 1. And I'm going to use this track to show you how easy it is to regenerate portions of a track so that you can completely customize the reel track's performance. I also want to point out right now that not only do we have the audio of this reel track on the Utility Track, we also have Silent MIDI which is used for notation, which is why I'm able to view the notes being played on this guitar fretboard. This is going to come into play later in the video as well. Now in the audio edit window, in the edit menu, there's a new generate submenu with select and generate real tracks and generate real tracks with the same real track that I already put on this track. And we'll look at that item first. If I don't have any regions selected or if I have the entire song selected, selecting that regenerates the whole thing. But if you do have a region selected, it will only regenerate that part. For example, if I like the solo that was already here, except I want something different for this little riff, I can select that region, then do the same thing. Thank you. 
and we have a completely new part only in that one little region. Also earlier I pointed out the guitar fretboard. You'll notice that the new material I generated now appears correctly on the fretboard and also moves seamlessly into the other notes that were there previously. So the underlying silent MIDI that's used for display is also regenerating when we do this. And I can keep doing that until I find one that I want to keep. And undo and redo both work for these, so since I've just generated a whole bunch of different parts over this small region, I can press Command Z to undo and re-listen to all of the ones I generated. And then Command Shift Z is Redo, so I can basically just scroll through them until I find the perfect riff for my song. And actually, I think I like this last one best. And I'll just tidy up the ending a little bit here by putting a fade out at the end of that little riff. Now in that menu we saw that you can also generate other real tracks on the same track, so I'll demonstrate that. And I also wanted to show you what happens when you have a mono track and then you pick a stereo real track, like a piano. The original mono track is converted to stereo, and converting mono to stereo is a non-destructive edit, but now the stereo piano can be added to it. And there it is. One other thing I wanted to mention is that when you regenerate parts of real tracks like this, Band in a Box automatically puts a very small crossfade between the old material and the new material. This is done to avoid clicks and pops between different chunks of audio. The amount of the crossfade is settable, so you can change that if you like, but there likely isn't a need for that. I also wanted to show you that if you insert or delete parts of audio, the silent MIDI also gets deleted and moves accordingly so it still syncs up. For example, I'll delete a chunk of audio here. And when I play it back, you can see it's also moved the notation to the left so it matches too. This behavior is determined by a setting here. One other thing you can do is take the silent MIDI from any real track or real drum and copy just that MIDI to a new utility track where you can then actually play the MIDI using whatever MIDI patch you like. This finger picking guitar from the style itself might be cool. I'll go to Edit, Copy Special, Copy Move Tracks, and I'll select Guitar 2 as the source, but only MIDI, not audio and I'll copy that to Utility Track 2. And now I'll choose a patch to play this MIDI. I'll use a high Q sound, and this Electro Tape Synth patch might be fun. And now we have this cool 60s synthesizer sound doubling the finger-picking guitar part. <laughs> 